Hi, everyone. It's Arthur here at Arthur Ease Your Mind on YouTube and ArthurEaseYourMind.com. And since it's Tuesday, it's Aloha Tuesday with our one and only Aloha Shirt Psychic, Mel Dor. Hey. Aloha. Aloha. And I just want to say that my shirt here, it's hard to see. Uh, but this is Oral Pharyngeal Cancer Awareness Month. So it says... We fight together for pharyngeal cancer awareness. So uh, everybody, please go to your dentist or your ENT or your medical doctor and have a complete oral exam. Um, if this cancer is caught early enough, it's curable. So please um, get that done once a year. All right. Now that the info marshal is over. <laughs> oh, we'll have another one later. Oh, but, yes, uh, <laughs> so... Of course, everybody was excited about the eclipse yesterday, and you actually got to see it. Yes, I did. Um, Gary and I went to the eclipse in 2017 mm -hmm. in St. Joseph, of Missouri, at the Walter Cronkite Center. The Walter Cronkite Center there is really cool at the university, but um, it rained. It was raining. But... We didn't get to see the sun eclipsing, but we experienced it. The darkness? Yeah, the darkness, meaning, you know, we felt the darkness coming on, all the lights came, you know, the the photoelectric lights, they mm -hmm. all came on and all that stuff. Um, and it, was, it wasn't it was a disappointment. It was just, you know, I wanted to actually see the sun eclipsing, but which, by the way, you have to look at through dark glasses because okay. otherwise you'll fry your retinas. During totality, you don't need the glasses. But anyway, we went to um, Springfield first and we saw the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Museum, which is incredible. People have got to go see that. It's really neat. And then we uh, we saw Abraham Lincoln's home in Springfield uh, it's we didn't go in because there's guided tours that go in, but they were sold out. But there's a whole street there where they've restored all the houses just like they were when Lincoln lived there. Dick Durbin, Senator Dick Durbin from Illinois, mm -hmm. um, his office is on that street. No cars. It's just it's really cool. It's, it's like a block. Um, so we saw all of that. And I put it on my show this morning when um, we... We're, we went to uh, Lincoln's tomb as well. And as I said this morning, everybody seems to be worried um, about what's going to happen. Mm. All right. And worried about our democracy and all of this and all of that. Uh, let me just find out. Let me just find my text, okay? Uh, give me one second. Um, okay, so we went into Lincoln's tomb, and as I was standing at the sarcophagus, um, I, I just, I got really emotional, and so all of a sudden, um, it came to me, like Abraham Lincoln, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but I asked for a message, and it says, um, we have been showing you that our union will survive. Our democracy shall live on, and justice shall and will be done. And I asked if it had been him giving me the message that justice shall be done, and the answer came back, trust in spirit. Okay. So it was really profound. And I felt the spirit of Mary Todd Lincoln as well. So that happened, and I was texting it to, to Linda. And then we drove from Springfield to Carbondale. That's a three-hour drive. And we got there about an hour before totality, and we were in uh, at Southern Illinois University, and they gave us goggles. It was kind of cool. We well, had to have the goggles. And, you know, when you look up at the sun, you could just kind of see the moon's shadow just kind of slowly, 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 slowly. And right before tight, uh, totality, you see these waving bands of light. Mm -hmm. Like when you look at the bottom of the swimming pool and you see that. Yeah. Um, 
that's one of the rare things you see during an eclipse. We didn't see the coronal rainbow, but then in totality, it gets dark, but it's a weird sort, sort of dark. You can look up at the sky and it's still blue, but yet by the sun, stars are coming out. Uh, Jupiter and Venus are not stars or planets, but you know when the sun is going down, how it looks on the horizon, that orangish color? Yes. Well, you see that in 360. Oh, wow. It's incredible. It's the best sunset you've ever seen in your entire life. And in totality, you don't use your goggles, so you can see the corona of the sun. Um, and it was, you know, the temperature drops about mm, maybe around 8 degrees. There was a breeze blowing in Carbondale. When the totality happened, the wind shifted directions and it wasn't blowing as hard. Um, you know, it's funny that insects kind of started chirping a little bit. <laughs> Birds got quiet. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just a lot of these different phenomenon. Now, I didn't experience this part, but they say that radio waves get all screwed up. So, uh, I think part of that has to do with the radiation of the sun, mm -hmm. but it was incredible. People, you know, nobody was talking about politics. It didn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people were just talking to each other and during totality and yay and oh, wow. And oh my God. And all these cameras pointed up to the sun. Um, I tried to take a few pictures during totality but you, you can't use the goggles during totality, even on your camera lens. But what I did is I took the goggles and I put them over my camera lens like this. So I got some neat pictures. Cool. Um, but I, they were on my show this morning. Put it on your community board. Um, yeah, you know, I probably should. But it was just an incredible experience. Uh, it was a, the experience of a lifetime. I don't think there's going to be another one until 2024. Correct. Uh, but there is one in Iceland, I think. In no, I'm sorry, 2044 is the next one, not yeah. 20. Um, in there's one in Iceland, I think, next year or the year after. So mm -hmm. um, it's, it's going to be a total eclipse. It's going to be in Iceland and going through the Arctic. So I'll tell Gary, we should just maybe just fly there to see it again. So we are officially eclipse chasers. Yay. That's your next T-shirt. There you go. But it was incredible. Well, you saw my trunk. You saw my experience with with eclipses. I sent you a picture. Yes. <laughs> now, actually, someone sent that to me. So. Yeah, show it. Because someone oh. said you have too much time. It's like I did not do this. I thought it was kind of cute, actually. I thought it was adorable. That's why I put it up. If I can find it. Oh, here we go. Um, let's see. I'm just. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna screenshot it. Okay. But here oh. in Los Angeles, of course, we were not in the direct path, but it did get, the atmosphere seemed odd. It was more like not quite dusk, because we don't get dusk in Los Angeles. The sun just goes over the over the uh, ocean. That's it. We don't have really dusk like back east. Wow. Nice. It's hard to see. Um, it doesn't show up in this picture, but I don't know why it doesn't. But you can actually see the sun, but you can't see it in this. I don't know why, but well, oh. we put it up on boards. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That's all right. But everything was like <clears throat> I tried watching everything through my eye. You know, put the camera up and look at on the iPhone. There's just a little sliver you could see, but not anything like you did. But um, it was. I did watch it on television. And when it hit land in Mazatlan, Mexico, it just struck me. I started welling up. It just yeah. like it does. Then, make emotion. It does make you emotional. And so then I waited another ten minutes to got to the next city. The next time I was crying three times. But um, no, it was. It was the thing is, it was a shared experience for the masses. Yes. And it took away all boundaries, all geography, all nationalities. It's a shared experience. Right. And it was very moving. And metaphorically, I've always been saying after this eclipse, a lot of things will be illuminated. And 
I think that's that's why I started crying because I really felt it that after this celestial dance that this country gets a chance to move forward. Good. In a positive way. Good. Um you sent me this picture, but I, I'll look at it. <laughs> now when we through the our through our goggles, uh it was looking like that right here. You see? Uh, like that and then if you come up that's totality except this part's backwards yeah. <laughs> um what happens was in totality the sun starts peeking out down here right they call it the the diamond ring and then slowly comes back up so it was really neat but this is cute <laughs> see, someone sent it to me it's oreos it's really cute it's cute <laughs> um Here's a picture of totality. Nice. Um, here's a picture of that Oreo cookie I was showing you. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, that's it was the filter, right? An incredible experience. It really was. Here's another one. Oh, wow. You can see it there. Yeah. Yep. Uh, here, I'll make it bigger. Nice. Um, and you're right, like, right, um, it, 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 it looks like dusk, but the colors change. They get orangish, mm -hmm. shadows get longer, it gets this grayish appearance. Um, and then here was one I took at totality. Wow. And that's the sun. Mm -hmm. But it's really the coronas, what you're looking at. Um, and then I try to take pictures during totality, but this is what I'm talking about. It's dark by us, but if you look out the along distance, the horizon, you're still... the sky looks like that. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, now I can understand why the ancients would be so, so fearful. Well, the Chinese culture said it was the dragon eating <laughs> the sun. Here's totality. It's hard to see, but there's a little dot in the middle. In the middle is, is the moon, yeah. That's the sun, but um, this is the corona. But um, let me and see. Corona is Latin for crown. Yes. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, there, there you can. There you can see it. That dark thing is the sun, and that big outer thing is the corona. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, this probably picked it up a little bit better than um, with the naked eye, but totality is really incredible. So, yeah, it was yeah. it was moving watching. All this it did, I, I watched both CNN and uh, MSNBC, but also uh, NASA. So oh, yeah. NASA probably was the best. Here was totality. Um, hold on a minute. This was totality. In Mexico. Right. That's what I was watching. That really affected me. It looks like that. That corona looks just like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can see it looks just exactly like that. Mm -hmm. And then when it starts to totality is over, just a little piece of the sun peeks out. And so it was here. You can see right there. See? Mm -hmm. oh, it's hard still. Nice. Yep. Um, and then it was about, you know, 45 minutes later, or however long it was, we experienced it on our own. So <laughs> um, I want to get some milk and Oreos now. There you go. I think we got questions. Enough of this. I hope that people didn't feel like we we're showing home movies here. <laughs> it was just incredible. It was an incredible yeah. experience. I'm glad you got to experience that. I really am. I, you know, it's, it's an experience of a lifetime and to see two times in one lifetime, but the first time when I was a kid, there was one that happened in Louisville that was a partial eclipse. Yeah. Um, you know, in 2017, like I said, we experienced it. We didn't see the actual eclipse, but this one was incredible. I'm hoping if I go to Iceland in a couple of years, we'll be able to see it again. So well, we'll it's still there and it hasn't blown up from the volcano. Yeah, right. <laughs> All righty. Are we ready? What would Borg do? 
Uh, sure. So we've got questions. And I just want to say to everyone that sent the questions, thank you. Because without you guys sending questions, this show would be boring. It was just us talking and showing home movies. We just sit here and show home movies and talk. Thank you so much. For That's sending. why we asked for the questions ahead of the pre-tapings. Right. So from Mary Morris. Oh, love. It's not a question. It's love both you guys. I look forward to your video. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Adele. What will happen to Stephen Miller? Some of his own family survived the Holocaust. Stephen Miller, dun, 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 dun. Um, I find it amazing that he had family members that survived the Holocaust and he behaves the way he does. Ripping children out of their... He was the architect for that. I couldn't hear you. He was the architect for all the children being ripped out of parents' hands and all that kind of stuff. And... But when this is going to sound weird, but entertainment purposes only. But whenever I look at him, I always see him in a Nazi uniform. He is going to have to pay back his karma big time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I default back to what Abe Lincoln's spirit told me. Our union, the union will prevail. The union democracy shall endure. Great. That the democracy crabgrass cockroaches and share right i'm sorry what will survive is democracy cockroaches <laughs> grab grass and share there you go well the joke was what what survives after an atomic bomb oh i see <laughs> I <got it. laughs> there you go <laughs> karen carpenter asks will trump have access to intelligence briefings due to being the republican nominee not right now mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't even you know. Look at them anyway when he was president. Why are we to look at him now? Well, he it's like in Talmud Putin. Oh, I know. Uh, but still, I don't see it happening. I, I yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know what's gonna happen this time around because right before the elections, they start to brief them on stuff. But I think um I think Biden took away a security clear. He did. He's not getting them. Nope. He's not and there's that. several months between now and elections, so a lot can happen. That's right. That's what I keep saying. <laughs> All righty. Uh, Citizen Kane, you have a, a visitor. Uh, here are the uh, <laughs> intelligence reports <laughs> in jail. You know, check it for knives and shivs and all that other stuff. <laughs> Stargazing Gal asks, you two bring... You two bring the fun and funny to Tuesday nights. Well, thank you. We almost didn't have it because we had a power outage here in Los Angeles. So it went on five minutes before we started taping. Yay. Now that Trump has backed off on supporting the local ban on abortions, the total ban on abortions that his evangelical voters want, will they continue to support him? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, because they're, Because Trump... You know, he backpedaled a little bit, according to what you said. He said, well, he'll, you know, it's whatever the states want. And, and but then he's the first to say, oh, I'm the first, I, I overturned Roe v. Wade. I did it. It's me. Right. Just him, right? And then so, he thanks the justices that he put on the court to make this happen. So, you know, at some point I see Roe v. Wade upheld again. And that what they're doing in some of these states, even trying to uh, to indict women uh, for terminating a pregnancy, like if it in, if it harms their health, right? Uh, I see, and so at some point that's going to go to the court, and the court's going to say, no, 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 you can't do that. But I see sanity coming back to this country at some point. <laughs> well, thank God. Um, but, but I don't, what I, what I get was if he supports one state with total abortion, no nope, total ban, then he supports total ban on abortion period. Or, he well, have it one or the other. He, he's trying to like, please everybody. Like we want to win. So we can't say abortion. But what he would say is oh, in that state that they can do what they want, but this state, they can do what they want as well. That's yeah, what but he, if he gets in, you know, it's going to be, you know national oh um, yeah among other things well there's one con congressperson who was saying 
I think it was out of Texas that were saying that they should execute women that have abortions. That's my point. That's frightening. And we all laughed in the birdcage when um, Nathan Lane was saying, well, if they're going to kill the baby, why don't we just kill the mother? And they're talking <laughs> about abortions around the table. And yeah. we're laughing at that. Now they're serious. I just can't believe how ridiculous it's become. Yeah. Totally ridiculous. Anyway, um, Michelle asks, I live in the state of Queensland in Australia. Hello, Australia. Howdy. We have a state election coming up in October this year. My electorate is called Manding Bora, and our incumbent is Les Walker. His right wing opponent is a police officer called Janelle Poole. Who do you see winning this race? Um, I feel, let's see. Okay. My electorate is called, what is Mooding Borough? I don't know what that, the electorate. Okay. And our incumbent is Les Walker. His right-wing opponent is police officer Janine Poole. I think Les Walker is going to win. That's what I pick up. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, the right wing or police officer is not going to win. I don't see that. No, neither do I. Joram. The same thing that can happen in Australia that happened here, and the same thing can happen in Canada that happened here. So, all you people of, of uh, everybody in Australia, Canada, Great Britain, don't let it happen. Get out and vote, speak up, um, because we thought it would never happen here, and look what's going on. That's right. Vote, vote, and vote. This is a birthday present. Thank you. Great birthday present. Um, Jorm, hi, Auntie Mellon, wonderful Arthur. Is, is there or will there be an investigation into why the president was not removed from the White House and relocated to a safe location on January 6th. And while his VP was under mortal threat a few blocks away, who in and or outside the Secret Service prevented them from doing their job that day? Inquiring minds would like to know. You know what? That is a very, very good point. I never thought of it, actually. Very mm -hmm. good point. Like, yeah, you know, um, Pence was in danger. They were going to hang him, but yet nobody even cared about. Well, not that they didn't care. Trump. No, well, don't forget Number when one. they had the guns and everything going into going to the metal detectors. Trump said, "Oh, you don't have to worry about them. Those are my people." But also, it's very, very difficult for an interloper to, or interlopers to get inside the White House. I mean, that place is like Fort Knox, so he was pretty safe, but. But having said that, you know, uh, I feel like that some people in the Secret Service knew what was going on and that they figured Trump was safe and they probably, um, I don't know what they were thinking about Mike Pence. Well, they tried to whisk him away and he said no. Remember, he wouldn't like, get in the car because he didn't know the Secret Service man. I'm sorry, say it again. He would he refused to get into that car because those were not his secret service people. Correct. And I don't blame him. Uh, and especially he, when the crowd's yelling, hang him, and they bring a gallows. Right. So he didn't do it. Um, but all that's gonna come out. A lot's gonna come out about that. We haven't heard anything yet. I mean, the layers of the onion will be peeled back, and it's gonna be a lot more shocking than even what we know right now. I know. Do you think Trump would have pardoned a Hamburglar? <laughs> just put it. We could have got him out of the White House. Just put a cheeseburger and some fries and a Coke in, in the front. Trump, Trump would have pardoned a ham sandwich. Yeah. After he ate it. Well, right. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, Jenna asks: When the Republicans lose the House, will the Dems do? away with the Judiciary Committee that keeps trying to impeach Joe Biden? My response is that Judiciary Committee will do away with itself because I don't know if what they're doing is illegal, 
but it's certainly being funded by dark money and that's all going to come out. And then the Jim, Jim Jordans and, and all of that, even when they found out that they didn't have anything to go on to impeach Biden, they still kept trying it. Yeah. And, and so it just made them look totally ridiculous. So I but see that, the, the that committee judiciary committee, I see the, the judiciary people. committee gone. I see there's still being a judiciary committee, but just different people. Correct. Exactly. Same same Broadway show, different cast. Right. <laughs> different dances. Okay. Carrie asks, with wages increasing, will this affect prices at the grocery store and other goods? Thank you, Mel and Arthur. Love your show. Well, what I do see is an end to price gouging. So, you know, it's like, what was it Biden said for a candy bar? It's less and you pay more money for less. I see legislation passed to stop that nonsense. Um, you know, wages increasing. I see grocery prices coming down a bit um, and other goods and services, too. They say it's about supply and demand. And they said, well, you know, the supply chain shortage. I think a lot of that was a crock just so the stores could use it to make more profits and they made record profits. Oh, and billions. And out here in Los Angeles, uh, I'm not sure if yeah, it was Los Angeles, I'm not sure all of California, I think it was, but the uh, people that are working at fast food restaurants, their minimum wage is now $20. And that's right. still not a living minimum wage. And here in Los Angeles, one guy closed one of his foster freeze and something else was closed. And he was saying, well, I can't afford to pay these people. It's like, well, if you didn't take such a profit, maybe you would. And they're making more money than God. Yeah. Speaking about making more money than God, did you hear about this Mr. Hanky? Not the Christmas poo. I was just going to say Mr. Hanky, the Christmas poo. The one who put up the money for the 175 for the bond for Trump. I heard about it when you told me about it right before the show. But I don't know all the facts, but I'm just going to put it out there that apparently it's been reported that he told Trump that he would do a bond for the 450, whatever it was, million dollars. And then they went to the court and said, oh, nobody offered. So, and well, they then they used it. So he's going to. He's a man who lies about his money. Why wouldn't he lie about this? So what's going to happen is at some point the judge is going to say, okay, you said you couldn't get this money, but now you say that you can, so we want the full amount. Problem is, though, this guy is not licensed to lend money in the state of New York like this. Guess what? Trump's, well, then Trump could have never gotten the money anyway. Well, that's that's what the, that's what the uh, New York is investigating right now, the Attorney General. Um. And that money that the guy gets, he was one of those guys with the, the car loans, like, and other loans. Like, there's apparently one company, uh, he charged them 268% interest and demanded to be paid daily. Oh, I'm sure he would have charged Trump handsomely for the interest. Well, he said, he, well, when he was interviewed, he said he didn't charge Trump enough. <laughs> but there's wow. also the guy that apparently his company when they repo cars they would call when they can't find the person they'd call they get a number or something or find them on facebook so you just want a free pizza where's the, where can we deliver it to wow and floor wow. shops and then they would call the relatives and, and they said if you don't pay us we're going to call your boss at work you know that's illegal and that's and i think they were called to task on all that stuff but i mean um, uncle tony doesn't do those things <laughs> And that's 60 40, you know, we have different, um, but um, it's crazy. Uh, I still say Trump's going to mess around, and the judge is going to say, either got to come up with the full amount, which Trump will appeal, because now Trump is filing a suit against Judge Marchand. It's not going to happen, it didn't go nowhere. It's not going to go, it's going to be like, because no. Judge Marchand already put out the questions for the he already put out here's the questions for the jurors. It's just, it's just a delay tactic, but um. I see that that's Judge Engeron, right? With that, no, with Judge Marshawn is. Oh, I know Judge Marshawn one case, but the money for uh, the, the the bond for the civil is right. Engeron. Yeah, I think Judge Engeron is going to say, "Well, 
you said you didn't have the money. And then you said you had the money. And so you got to come up with the whole banana. Republic. Um, and I don't think a court of appeals would then overturn Judge Ingeron's decision. Um, it's Isn't that something called perjury? Well, if he did it on perjury. What's that? If he did it under oath, it's yeah, perjury. I know. But I don't if he didn't do it under oath, then it's not. It's just out and out lying. But when do you know Trump is not telling the truth? He opens his mouth. But... You know, I'm so shocked that the Bibles didn't like catch on fire when he was holding them. Well, I'm sure they didn't sell that well. But they also said this. They actually had in the uh, Q and A questions, frequent asked questions was, "What happens if my pages are sticky?" <laughs> or like the the uh, that was an actual question though. It's real. Or like, or like the gold tennis shoes <laughs> didn't go very far. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, so just, if, if people you can what... afford four hundred dollar tennis tennis shoes, then our economy is doing really well. That's just going to show you how good of a businessman he really is. <laughs> And apparently, I think it was early today, he was at some golf tournament and was holding up a Playboy from 1990 that he did an interview with. So one week's the Bible, the next week is Playboy. What does that tell you? The hypocrisy of it just blows my mind. It's almost like a scene from George Orwell. It's like, you know, one minute he's saying one thing and then the next changes it and it's like, whoa. Yeah, and, double speak. It's just nuts. Yeah, and they go along with it, so... <laughs> I don't want that Kool-Aid. Yeah, not me. <laughs> Our favorite gal, Jitterbug22. Hello, amazing Arthur and Auntie Mel. Since the thug bond of 175 million is an issue and there's an investigation on the guy who put up the bond, do you see Letitia James seizing the thug's properties anytime soon? Will this bond be null and void? Thank you for your weekly collabs. collabs. You are both fabulous. Well, thank you. I see his, I've, my guides have shown me all along, a lot of his assets will be seized so it can cover that bond. And mm. so it's not out of the woods yet, you all. He's going to lose his assets. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> With two S's. Exactly. Uh, <clears throat> User uh, asks, always happy to see you guys. Aloha. Do you see any of the MAGA Congress Republicans getting in trouble for the January 6th insurrection or they above the law? Uh, they, they're going to get in trouble. You know uh, Isn't it past his jail time? I couldn't hear you. Isn't it past his jail time? Right. And they're not uh, They're not above the law. I do want to go back to Jitterbug Tutu, though. Mm -hmm. um, the guy who put up the bond, I think he's got like an insurance company, but then they said something about he didn't have enough to put up a bond or there was something. It's, it's all questionable because oh. he was also willing to take property as collateral when nobody else would. Right. But and he I, also offered to take, the, you know, do the 450 plus million and they and I, the judge, no, we don't have it. I think Letissa James is going to say, wait a minute here. <laughs> and so I see assets being seized. And I, I wonder if the apartment gotta, building is going to be sold. The money's the put up, but I got the money's put up, but then they didn't fill out paperwork. How could you get that kind of money? And, and his lawyers didn't fill out the paperwork correctly. Come on, that's BS. Well, what they're asking for is we might be saying, oh, they have to see the financial statements. It's not Trump's financial statements. It's Mr. Hankey's financial right. statements. But still, the guy but, charged two hundred sixty-five. But he didn't fill out the paperwork correctly, and his lawyers should have been on top of it. Yeah. Well, uh, I see. Um, hmm. I see his properties being seized, and I, I don't know if the bond will be null and void, but they're going to say that there were improprieties in Trump getting that bond, and that's going to be spur another investigation. Mm -hmm. You know, and I can't, the guy said, show me if he'd get the money for it, but there's a paper trail, and they're on top of it. Mm -hmm. So, good. Well, that's money from broken dreams and people crying believe me right <laughs> and i'm not surprised susan george please tell us this i can't answer 
So hopefully you can. Please tell us what you see as the reasons the United Nations selected Saudi Arabia as the site of the 2025 Conference on the Status of Women. This seems like a slap in the face to me. How about selecting France, New Zealand, Britain, or Ireland? I don't know why they did that. Um, unless it, it's unless it's just um, a protest against Saudi Arabia, and now they are about human rights, so they would have it there. Well, I believe last year was in Abu Dhabi, so it's kind of strange. Uh, well, I mean, I like uh, your I like your analysis like, of it. One way I get it, it's like it's kind of, you know, we chosen Saudi Arabia because they got a poor record on women's rights. It's kind of like telling them, smacking them, and saying, "Hey, you know, get with the program with women's rights." <laughs> yeah, it's a scary uh -huh. one. Because think about it: had they chose France, New Zealand, or Britain, or Ireland, even great choice, but um, those countries. That I've just that she mentions, you know, they're they're favorable to women's rights. Saudi Arabia is Saudi Arabia is. So it's forcing them to recognize women. Correct. That's exactly what's going on. Yeah, it can't be in France because they're getting ready for the Olympics. <laughs> right. <laughs> Lone Phantom. Hey, you two. Will Merrick Garland and conservative elements in the FBI and DOJ face any consequences for slow walking and sabotaging the investigation of 45 and his neighbors in Congress? Can I go first on this? Yeah, I, I, but OK, I was just going to say something about Merrick Garland. But That's what I was going to say. Well, you Merrick say Garland is walking a tightrope that people don't understand. He's walking a razor's edge because anything he would do. He, after what Bill Barr did, will be questioned. So he's crossing his T's, dotting his I's. He's he's very cautious, but he did get. They think he should have gotten Jack Smith earlier, but he got them when he got them. He's not doing this on purpose, per se, to help Trump or anyone. He's not in cahoots with the, with the conservative elements whatsoever. If they were, he would have been on the Supreme Court by now. Merrick Garland is slow, methodical, and as you said, he dots his I's and crosses his T's. He's not going to throw, you know, what at the wall just to see what sticks. Spaghetti. And my guides have told me that from day one. Mm -hmm. now, do I think he could have gone a little faster? Absolutely. We all do. But then again, when God was handing out patience, I stood in the attitude line. Uh, but... Uh, I don't think he's in cahoots with anybody mm -mm. except that he's he is conducting this investigation through Jack Smith and he's letting, let Jack Smith handle it. That's what he hired Jack he's Smith. He's not compromised is what I'm trying to say too. Yeah, Bill, yeah. Merrick Garland is not compromised. Bill Barr was. Um, you know, um, even if there are conservative elements in the FBI and DOJ, that doesn't mean they're compromised. Now, Lone Phantom, if you're asking if those compromised elements in the DOJ, like people who work for Bill Barr and the FBI and the Secret Service, uh, will be sanctioned because they tried to sabotage this investigation, the answer to that is yes. Yeah. I forget where I read this, but it, it was saying that one insider saying that Jack Smith has over 200 names on his list he does but then again they don't leak anything so i don't know where that's coming from right um so there you go but merrick garland he 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 hasn't colluded with anybody well <laughs> mm -mm. it was if it was mike johnson he colluded with the bible and god first you know <laughs> Yeah, well, Marjorie Taylor, Marjorie Taylor Green doesn't like that because now she wants to get rid of him. Oh, and then she said the eclipse was showing, you know, basically comparing the eclipse to end times. Judgment. What? Yeah, Mar 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 Marjorie Taylor Green said all the, e the eclipse and all the earthquakes are kind of like showing us judgment. Of her? Yeah, really. 
And, you know, it just shows how ignorant she really That's is. That's why Ken Buck's calling her Moscow Marjorie. Or unless she just, she knows better and she's trying to play to the base, the ultra right wing Christian nationalists. But even some of those aren't that stupid. I hope not. I mean, an eclipse, a wrath of God. Are we living in like the Middle Ages or what? Um, I'd like to see her living there. <laughs> As a chambermaid. No, that's no, she wouldn't make it that far. Butterfly. How many more earthquakes on the East Coast? Friday was not fun on April 6th. I was in Stanford, Connecticut in a very old building. Yes, it did its dance. Not one building in this area designed nor built for an earthquake. Cheers, big hugs to both. I do think they'll have more earthquakes on the East Coast. You know, there's a fault line running right through Chicago, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. So it's quite possible that one could happen here. Our buildings aren't earthquake proof either. But I don't think it's, there's going to be Armageddon earthquakes like that you'd see out on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. you know? Um so I, they're rare, but they do occur on the East Coast. I see a few more, but um, not like what happens on the West Coast. Stuff getting knocked over at Target, that's about it. Correct. Yeah, until you're in an earthquake, you don't understand it. I've never been in one, nor do I want to be. Yeah. I've been in a tornado, and that's enough. And you're still here. Yeah, they didn't fly away to us, so that was good. Okay. Uh, Ramon, Rayma, Milan, thank you, Arthur and Mel, for your light-filled work. Question. Yesterday during the solar... Oh, we answered this. Trump put out, out a statement about anti-abortion that was met with opposition from everyone. Is this the tipping point against him? I sent the shift. No. But, but well, to a degree, but no. I think what this person's asking is, will it take his base away? His little base will be his little base. But what it did do was really incense women. Mm -hmm. A lot of women that might have been thinking, well, maybe I, you know, how am I going to vote? The more they do this, it's just going to incense more and more women and 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 young people. And it's going to really galvanize them to get out and vote. You know, my guides tell me with Trump, the women shall bring him down. And that's what's going to happen. There's a new ad that just came out from Biden people. And it's a story about a tragedy where this woman miscarried. They took her to the hospital. They wouldn't treat her. She went home and she had septus. I mean, she lost the baby then she had septus and almost died and probably cannot have children again. And at the end they say, and yes, this is Donald Trump's fault. Well, he, 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 for it, so I, 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 you know, the thing he said about, you know, um, that he, he over, I overturned Roe v. Wade, like he alone did it. It's like, okay. Yeah. And then he, in that little speech during the eclipse, he uh, thanked, you know, all the ju justices in, in the Supreme Court that voted for it. Yeah, because he's trying to butter up to them and suck up to them in case, you know, because he still wants them to say that um, he's free from immunity. That's what's going on. Well, if that's the case, then so is Joe Biden. He can go have the, uh, the Navy squad go out and kill him, right? He makes some apples and oranges. Oh, so okay Trump. Anybody else can do it, but Trump can't. Yeah. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Kareen. Hey guys, love your show. Hey Mel, I know you are from Kentucky, so I'm going to ask a sports question. Will UK find a new baseball coach who will be a good fit? Yes, thank God. <laughs> University of Kentucky. Um, either U of L or UK. Um, uh, yes, I do see a, a really good basketball coach who will bring them to victory. 
I didn't get this question at first because I thought she was talking about the UK. No, University of Kentucky. Kingdom. University of Kentucky. I'm teasing. Well, no, I'm kind of blonde. Uh, Gail asks, will anything happen to the Secret Service who wiped Penn Carr, I think they meant Pence, to his office and, and tried to get him in the car in the basement? Also, anything happened to the Secret Service that knew Trump was transporting documents? Love and collabs. They knew he was transporting documents. They didn't know what was in them. And, you know, they didn't know he was breaking the law. So not much. Well, two, a couple did and tried to warn him they'll come forward. OK, if Eileen Cannon can get the case right, it's not about the Presidential Records Act. It's about he took documents illegally and refused to turn them over and shared secrets. Hello. For money or for something. Not about the Presidential Records Act. She's got it all wrong. I mean, she pro pro. Just, She's going to be gone. I predict by May 23rd. The, the 11th, 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, I think, will remove her from the case. Oh, they're going to. And I feel it's going to happen by May 23rd. The lawyers will be like, well, we're, we need another judge. It's going to take us more time. No, no. no, no. The judge, will, whoever takes over, will take over. Right. And we'll reverse all that stuff Cannon did that she shouldn't have done. Okay. Um, Ooh. Uh, I Anything happened to the Secret Service who wiped pen card to his office and tried to get him in the car in the basement? That means... I think she's talking about Mike Pence, the guards we were talking about that tried to get him in the car and he didn't know who they right, were. Right. Um, I see that Secret Service agent sanctioned, absolutely. Yeah. All he's got to say is, well, I was doing my job. Nah, I'm glad Mike Pence didn't get in the car with him. Yeah, did you watch the movie Nuremberg? Yes. Yes, I did. Yes. Just doing following orders. So you have a event coming up. Let's let's do a commercial. Let me just touch on this. Somebody okay. says this is pre-recorded. Why are we posting questions now, asking for a friend? Because we put this up last night, and in order that we put these the thumbnail up last night, so that you'd have time to ask questions, so that we're pre-recording it on Thursday or Tuesday. I'm Tuesday. sorry, and then and then half an hour later, it goes it goes. Well, hopefully. Because of hope. right. Well, that's why I said in the beginning of the show, thank you, everyone, for your questions. I was trying oh, to answer that right away. So, uh, so I think your your friend getting it right misread the time element. You know, please post questions below. Yes, that was put up yesterday. For the show that we are pre-taping. For the show that we're doing right now. Yeah. I will make that. I'll clear that up next time I write that. No, I'm... <laughs> Okay, go ahead, go ahead, um, Arthur. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, oh, but, oh, you. Uh, what, what were you saying about? I've got what? <laughs> we're going to do another infomercial. I'll make it brief. Um, yes, we have our urban retreat coming up at the end of September. Um, there's going to be Linda Grendel, myself, Kevin Lewis, Kevin Chandler, Deanne. Um, uh, PD Kim Copeland and Arthur is going to be the MC. So, um, for information, please call my office 847 590 5411, or you can email me at my um, email at my website www.meldor.com. We don't have, um, we don't just have a landing page on there just yet. We're working on it. So if you go on my website, you won't see anything on it. But we will give your number to Joan and she'll call you back. <laughs> and he, I'll put those numbers in the cryon for everybody at the bottom. But also, if anyone wants a reading with you, what do they do? Um, we stand on their head and corner and spit BBs. <laughs> <laughs> They consult. Can I, their, can I get out of the corner now? They consult their Ouija board. No, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm in a crazy mood. I only slept four hours last night, so I'm slap happy. Um, you will call my office at eight four seven five nine zero five four one one if you'd like to have a session with me. Now, Arthur, if they'd like to have a session with you, what number do they call? 
Well, they get out of the corner first. No. <laughs> uh, first of all, you can, all the information will be below in the about page here. But it if you want to call me, I doesn't guarantee I'm going to answer it, but leave a message at 310-494-5955. Or you can write at www.ArthurEaseYourMind.com or here on YouTube at Arthur Ease Your Mind. And it's going to be fun. But I'm really looking forward to September. Me too. It's going to be fun. Uh, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be incredible. Um, we have a meet and greet and then um, we'll break up into we'll break up into different groups, four different groups. Um, well, there'll be four different groups. We'll bring in A, B, C, D. So group A would be with me. Group B would be in a message circle with Linda, while group C will be with Kevin Lewis. And then group D would be with Kim Copeland and Kevin Chandler. And then we just switch okay. groups. So everybody gets to everybody in that group gets to see all the practitioners. So it's round robin. Right. Absolutely. Cool. So, so, it's, so it's basically almost eight to one or ten to one. No more yes. than that. Twelfth one. Well, plus we have a lot of volunteers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but it's still almost individual. Oh yeah, everybody in Linda's group. And my group too, they get in Linda's group. It's like a, Linda does a message circle. She's an excellent psychic. Mm. They'll all get a, a, a mini reading from Linda in the group. Great. Well, aren't you glad we got done and didn't show any more home movies? There you go. I was just, you know, so excited about the eclipse. So uh, people seem to like it. But um, anyway, thanks for so, letting me show that. It was just everyone a, saw the light. There you go. Everybody, yeah, right. As I say, send them light till they get it right. Well, you know what? Surround them with love and light. So mm -hmm. um, the eclipse kind of reminds me of what's going on in the country. You know, it takes, the, it, it, you know, the sun's blotted out. It gets dark, but then it gets light again. Yeah. And it's not complete darkness. It's not as dark as we think it is. The light shall prevail. And the light ain't Donald Trump. Maybe on top of the police car, but <laughs> there you go. It ain't him. All right, oh. everyone. Thank you for stopping by for Aloha Tuesday. We'll be back next week, hopefully, and we'll take it from there. So right. thank you, Mel. Thank you.